Maka Mitchell. The next question comes from Maka Mitchell, the forgotten Mitchell brother. Well, he says he's loving the videos. Is uh, he actually a Mitchell brother? Like, actually? Yeah, probably not, but his, his name's Maka Mitchell. Um, you have a great quirky way about you, Dave. Quirky. Never been a fan of that word, really. It's not cool. Um, I'm interested to know, he asked, I would like to see or hear the brothers talk about adversity. I'll expand my question by asking the lessons that help them go from broke to rich. Okay. First things first, if you're, if you're watching this right now, whoever's watching this, you've already won the lottery. You've already won the, the natural lottery which happens on this earth because your circumstances and your abilities to achieve things in life are completely based on where you're born. If you're born in Yemen to a goat herding family, you're gonna, you're gonna herd goats and you're never gonna drive a baguette. You're gonna herd goats and there's no way out of that. You could name one of your goats baguette. That's, that's the and you could ride a baguette all the time. Yeah, yeah. fuck a baguette. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> loopholes. <laughs> there's always loopholes. There's always loopholes. But my point is that if you're born in certain places on so this earth, goat holes. Go no. false, not like that. Go ahead. If you're born in certain places on the surf, you don't stand a chance. And we talk about, like, I see in the paper, there's no social mobility in England. Most of the people who are born rich stay rich. Most people who are born poor stay poor. There's no social mobility. Well, obviously. But we have a lot more social mobility than a lot of places on Earth. Like, if you're born in the rural India, then you're fucked. So if you're born in the Western world, you have pretty much no excuse to not be as rich as you want to be. I'm not saying everyone should want to be rich. If your goal is to do something else, you know, like make art, or be happy or whatever bollocks, save the animals, go do your shit. But if you want to be rich, then you have no excuse to not be rich. Because pe people say, I want to be rich, I'd love to be rich. But they don't really mean it. Because if they really meant it, they'd prioritize it. In life, you can only prioritize certain things. I prioritize kickboxing. Which means when my friends were out doing, getting drunk and shagging bitches, I was fighting. That's why I became good at it. If you prioritize making money and you put that above other things, you're gonna make money. Mm -hmm. So people don't prioritize it. They say, oh, I'd love to be rich. And then they work the job and they go home and they watch TV. Why haven't they got a second job? Why haven't they got their own business to run the evening? Why, well, oh, I'm tired. Oh, I need to kick the kids some food. Bollocks excuses. Or you can make a sandwich, fuck them. You know, it's just excuses. People make excuses and then they sit and say, oh, it's the conservatives' fault I'm not rich, or the UK government doesn't let anyone get rich, or they tax me too much. Or Brexit. Just Brexit, it's Brexit's fault. No, you're just a cunt. If you really wanted to be rich, you'd be rich. Mm. So, yes, I've worked normal jobs. But the reason I'm rich now is because I understood that I genuinely wanted to be rich. So whoever sent this question in, how many jobs do you work? If the answer is one and not two, or well, if the answer is one and you don't own your own business on the side, well then it's your own fault. You know, I, there was a long time, Tristan can verify, we both had normal jobs and was running our own business in the evenings, trying to put money in the bank. And it didn't work for a long time. Yeah, failing. Then it started to work. You know, because we didn't want to be normal people having a normal wage. Yeah. And everyone says they don't want to be a normal person with a normal wage. But they continue to live a normal life with a normal wage and don't do anything about it. No one, no one in this, no one on this planet is going to wake up and think, "I want to make that person's life better." No one's going to wake up and go, "You know what? Andrew, he's a great guy. I'm going to give, I'm going to make Andrew rich." Yeah. No one's going to do no, that. No one besides me. Yeah, I'm the only person who wake up and think I'm going to make myself rich. So if you aren't thinking that about yourself, then then who the fuck's going to think it for you? Nobody. You know, no government tax policy. Luckily for Macca, he's got sort of Phil, Graham, Billy, and Peggy looking out for him, isn't he? Because he's a Mitchell. But otherwise, he's he's, he's alone and a lost cause. Do you know what I mean? He needs to start introducing a proper food menu in the Queen Vic. Mm, exactly. Put some money in the bank. Exactly. You're very lucky that my mum used to watch that terrible show 10 years ago, and I've got the memory of a genius. Because I haven't watched TV in two years, and I still get your stupid joke. Thank you very much. Stupid joke. But so yeah, that's the point. Well, so he's saying, oh, this guy's like adversity. How do I become rich? Da, 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 da. Mm. Stop chatting shit. Think of all the hours you wasted watching TV. Don't play a video game ever again. And start concentrating on making money. If you enjoy making money, it's all you're going to end up doing anyway. It hasn't even got to be a job. All I ever cared about was making money. It's all I ever enjoyed. So of course, it's all I did. And now, oops, I'm loaded. That's how it works. Oops, yeah. Accidents happen. Hi Maka, uh, yeah, take on that advice. I hope that's helpful for you. But at the same time, don't unsubscribe to our YouTube channel because five minutes a day, every day, isn't going to waste money making time, is it really? No. You should keep watching. He needs my knowledge, yeah. Exactly. It's more beneficial to, to stay here. So, okay, last question. How they became entrepreneurs and did they ever work? You've kind of done it. You've kind of done it. Yeah, I've kind of done it. Yeah, we did work normal jobs. We became entrepreneurs by just trial and error. Nothing works the first time. Uh -huh. And it's prioritizing, like I've said. I know so many people who put their friends, their family, their social life, their, their Netflix series, their soap operas, that all these things come above making money and then they wonder why they don't have money. Mm. You're like, how far down the list do you want to put it and still manage to pull it off? Yeah. You know, 
you have to put it number one. You put it number one, you'll make money. You don't put it number one, you'll never make money. It's really that simple. You're born in the Western world, you're born in a rich country. There's no excuse for not to have as much money as you want to have. If you want the pretzel, take the pretzel. That's basically what Andrew's saying. If you want there. the pretzel, put the pretzel as number one. Unless someone harder steals it, and then you're fucked. So. So, what we do? It's Christmas Day. Here, take side. December 25th. December 25th, correct. Christmas, most joyous day on earth. Uh, you hungry? Starving, can't wait. What we got, pigs in blankets? I imagine it's bird upon bird upon bird, like it usually is with you two fellas. We have a Christmas tradition here in Romania. Yeah, what is that? It's slightly different than back then, but... Go on. You'll see. There's this place that prepares a big Christmas dinner for everyone. Fantastic. There and you pay, it's only about like three or four quid. And you get like a Christmas dinner and a drink. Fantastic. I imagine it's like, what, well, fucking big pig with an apple in its mouth, something really weird and European. Yeah, something like that. Can't bloody wait. Pretty close. Yeah. Bucharesti the bestie. Here we are, Dave. Here we are, where? Well. Toyota, don't think so. Are you on the side or are we hitting the drive through? Oh, for fuck's sake. You're not excited about Christmas? What do you think, Andrew? Drive through or. That's not Christmas. Drive through. Drive through. That's not Christmas. Well, they don't do pigs. We're going to McDonald's on Christmas Day. I do. It's Christmas. Hello. Get up in there, please. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Perfect. Merry Christmas. Cool. Christmas nuggets. Mm. Do, they do, do they do pigs uh, one and moment, blankets? One moment. Give me those little pies. Can I have a dessert? This, this, what's it called? This, this pie. It's an actual Christmas pudding, pie? is it? Yeah. Apple pies. Five. Listen, McDonald's Cheech. is what we do at Christmas. I don't fucking sit around like all these other motherfuckers. Cheech. Oh, I've cooked dinner, didn't it? Firstly, A, English roast dinners are shit, especially uh, cooked roast cherry, Christmas please. dinner. Um, one, two. Yeah. Can I get a Christmas burger? Do they do a Christmas okay. burger? Three coffee. With milk? No. One. Oh, no. Thank you. Oh, no. Can I get a burger? No. A Christmas one burger. Give me a cappuccino. One, uh, sorry. This is stress. This is a stressful sorry, Christmas sorry. dinner. One cappuccino, two black coffee. Okay, one cappuccino, two coffee. Yeah. On a serious note, can I get the Christmas burger? Yeah. No. No. Uh, medium. Thank you. Oh, this is. Ho, 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 man. Let me tell you a story. Mm. That's why I'm having McDonald's for Christmas dinner. Because Christmas dinner is extremely similar to a, a British roast dinner. And British people love their roast dinners because they think they're good. If you ask any English person, they go, you can't beat a good roast, you can't beat a good, you can beat a good roast, because roast dinners are fucking awful. Whenever I'm in England, I eat Jamaican. The good thing, the best thing England ever did was conquer the world and colonize it. Because at least now we've got a whole bunch of Jamaican food, a whole bunch of Indian food. Preach. All this other food from other places that we took over. Thank God. Because English food is fucking awful. When I first ever came to this country, let me tell you a story about roast dinners and why they're shit. When I first ever came to this country, everyone was saying to me, can't be a good roast, can't be a good roast. And Hello. I was like... Uh, waiting for five minutes. Okay, well... well sure. Uh, here. Okay. okay. Merry Christmas. They're like, you can't beat a good roast. You can't beat a good roast dinner. It's mm -hmm. the best thing. You can't beat a good roast dinner. And then I was like, what's so good about it? They're like, Yorkshire puddings. I was like, Yorkshire puddings? Mm -hmm. I didn't know what Yorkshire pudding was. So they're like, Yorkshire puddings, Yorkshire puddings. Oh, you can't, I can't have a roast without Yorkshires. I'm imagining a pudding, like some kind of cake or some shit. Like, what the fuck? This is the best thing ever. To... And it comes out and it is dry, stale bread. The worst with some great, the worst thing. You have no idea how much they hype. People hype Yorkshire puddings and you don't know what one is. Oh, Yorkshire pudding, you'll have a roast and you have Yorkshires, yeah, Yorkshires. It's fucking all, what is this circle, crusty shit? And from that point onwards, I've hated roast dinners. I hated English people because as soon as I came here, you fucking deceived me. All you bastards deceived me. All you fuckers deceived me, lying to me about fucking Yorkshires, pretending they were something good when they're fucking awful. I'm not, listen to me, fuck Christmas. Fuck Yorkshire puddings, fuck roast dinners. Nuggets, mate. When I finally do conquer this earth, England will be punished. There will be retribution for the day that my fucking heart was broken after my expectations were built up to the... Pudding, why call it a pudding? It's not even a pudding. I'm from America, man. I thought it'd be some fucking like triple layer cheesecake shit. Fucking Yorkshire's, fuck. Now seems like a good time to get your opinion on Christmas pudding. 
Christmas. You're gonna get your Christmas pudding in a minute when it comes out on a McDonald's bag. An apple pie. Uh huh. If Christmas puddings were good, it would just be a dessert that people ate regularly. I mean, every fucking Sunday, people were eating desserts, chocolate cake, this cake. Why not just make the Christmas pudding, the ingredients for a Christmas pudding, and eat it every Sunday? Why don't they do that? Because it's shit. Because it's shit. So they eat it on Christmas out of some weird tradition. If it was a good dessert, people would just make it and eat it. So we're not as a we're not having any pigs in blankets. We're not going to have any stuffing. We're just having nuggets, things. mate. Nuggets. We're having nuggets. Nuggets. Dry nuggets. Do they do gravy? Do McDonald's do gravy? I don't think they Christmas do. isn't happening, Dave. You're gonna have to get over that. Plate. Boil some Brussels sprouts, put those on the plate. Make some cabbage, mash some potatoes, put that on the plate. There's no cuisine in English cuisine. Desserts first, it's Christmas. Too hot. I'll throw my face off while driving. We'll see. It's Christmas. If you, let me make this very, very clear. If you're expecting some other food or some other, no, this is it. So eat while you can. Because mm -hmm. no supermarkets are open. And my fridge is notoriously empty because I eat only at restaurants. So this is what you get. When you're crying later, you're not. Mmm. Taste of festive joy. It tastes like Dave's crushed hopes and dreams. Oh, it does taste better than a fucking Yorkshire. Bittersweet. It tastes like Dave's lack of festive fulfillment. It tastes like someone got Rudolph, shot him out of the sky with a sniper rifle, and fucked his dead body. While Santa watched, saying, No, no, not Rudolph. And slid his foot. Killed everyone. Went on a murderous rampage. That was me. Through the North Pole. Got all the little helper elves who are just making little toys, all smiling. Did a, just walks in with a big boner and a chainsaw. To suck this or die. So all the little elves are like, ah, oh, and he starts chopping them up with a chainsaw, and then everyone gets in a row trying to suck his dick so they don't die, and he's just chopping heads off, and his boners everywhere, and juices everywhere, and blood's everywhere. It's possibly the most horrific Christmas tale ever told. You haven't heard this story? No. It's about a man called Andrew. Andrew doesn't take shit. Especially not Christmas. The boner grinch. The boner grinch. The boner grinch. Chainsaw in one hand, axe in the other. The, Massive dong. The 10 inch grinch. You said you were half black, so. How well do you know me? Very well, mate. I want well to know I don't eat chocolate. I don't want this Santa log. Keeping. You got another one in there? This? Yeah. I don't want it. It's. You can't hey, bought me anything. It's Lynx Africa. That I couldn't have bought for myself. I don't want it. And did you want your gifts? <laughs> the main garment is yours. What is it? Some sort of shit thing. Have a look. You'll be a fan. Brown Santa, because you're half black. He is mixed race, so I guess he's very uh, PC. PC Santa. Uh huh. Okay. That's uh, Lynx Africa for either one of you. Every man must have one of these at Christmas. Classic Lynx. Is that, do they still make this? Oh, yeah. Best seller. I thought they making this in like 1988 or something. That's right. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure nobody in Africa smells this way. <laughs> and uh, here's the main gift. Absolute essential at Christmas time. Grinch. You know what? Because it has a Grinch on it, I'm going to wear it. Good if man. It, if it was... Santa or some bullshit, I wouldn't wear it. But because it's a Grinch, it suits you. It suits me. So everyone knows I'm not happy that it's Christmas. I don't believe in good cheer for all men. I fucking hate everybody. So I'm gonna rock it with obviously my super muscles and shit, make it look G. That's how it is. Green G. Green G. The 10 inch Grinch. Christmas cracker.
God, you might have a hand then. You have made my Christmas a little bit special, Dave, I must say. Well, thank you very much, mate. It's an uh, absolute pleasure. I didn't get you anything. Yeah, so I've heard. Uh, it's looks, looks like nothing. Around the McNuggets, kind of. Yeah, we've got the McNuggets. Lennon, don't you know? We've been with us long enough. And I want you to say something on camera. Have you ever drunk as much alcohol in your life as you drink existing with us? Tonight? I do feel quite ill. We are professional boozers. Everyone else goes, oh, I drank once hard that day. Day after day, we professionally booze. Copious amounts. Unstoppable. Unforgivable amounts of booze. We can tear through booze like you just can't tear through booze. That's what we do. In the cinema, when you're throwing up, we drink the same amount. The next day, with breakfast, you start with a beer and you get booze. Mm. So champions do it. So, today we know a casino where we get unlimited free drinks because we've spent so much money there. And that's where to go. Boozing. Boozing and gambling. Gamboozling. That's the plan. Is the Grinch feeling lucky? Oh, born lucky. I'm with a whole ton of money. That's the plan. It's free alcohol, but we lose. Money. Well, you lose. I always win. Okay. 31 black, baby. Let it ride. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hello and welcome back to the most expensive and the most offensive of my employer, Andrew Tank. So I've come up with the three things I believe are their income. They're slightly mysterious still. Yes. Because the, the, the place I'm renting here now has jacuzzi on the, on the roof. In Boca Restaurant here. Here, in the It's, I'm just renting, I'm only here for two days, three days, I'm staying. Right. Today's winnings in the casino are now being spent on slot machines. Being spent, being invested. Invested wisely. Bet on Pharaoh games, and we always say, the Pharaoh will never let us down, and we always lose. And once again, we play the golden Pharaoh. Pharaoh always lets us down. Hi. Hello. You're not allowed to video. Okay. Just video me, mates. You're not allowed to not in the arcades. Not in the arcades. No, because they think because it's all on camera. They don't think you're uh, going to come over and do the machines over. What happened? We know. Pharaoh paid me a hundred pounds. If you're watching this documentary, you're going to think it's fake. Some fat bitch W H Smith employee came over and told you to stop filming. I want a hundred pounds. Andrew's upset. She was upset. The whole world's upset. The Pharaoh never lets me down. Let's go gambling. I thought of this idea a good while ago based on several things that I currently do. It's an amalgamation of several projects uh, and businesses that I run into an app that I think could make people who use it uh, a fair bit of money, myself a lot of money as I'm hoping to sell it, but I think it could be the next big popular thing. I'm not one of these idiots who believes in his idea so much that I'm sure it's gonna be the next Snapchat and everyone's gonna download it, but it's unique, it's an original idea and if I can get a few hundred thousand users, then I can sell it. But exactly what it is, I, I won't say just yet. Mm. Partly because I don't know you, Dave, and you know, you mm. might know some nerds who can build an app and steal my idea. Mm. So let's not do that. Not just yet. Some worms. Yeah. Um, wouldn't you stick with your app? Like, you know, wouldn't you want to see it all the way through, like Zuckerberg? Zuck. Let me. I'll, I'll cover him in a second. Let me. I've got business to take care of. Hello. Perfect, and that's all I need to okay. launch to launch the app and, and, and get it up and running. Okay. Okay, okay. The, did you send all the, the notes to the design team? As I said, it was very small changes. You have a very good idea of what I was trying to do, but the, the, have, have you sent those, those sent them those notes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm 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 I'm. I'm, I'm oh, good, good. Okay, I'll be sending you the invoice uh, directly. So yep. what I'll do is that if, if uh, you are paying direct, directly, yep. uh, I'll be sending you the different invoice, which would be a simple simple invoice. Yes. So I'll please. be sending you that particular invoice in the next half, next half an hour. Perfect. And I'll, I'll sort that ASAP. And that will go again directly into your, into your Indian bank account in rupees. Perfect. Perfect. Sure. Okay. Speak soon. Goodbye. Signal was going a bit. But yeah, as I was saying, this app, I'm going to launch it get you know hopefully a couple thousand of thousands of users via my advertising campaign if it can grow to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of users things like this are worth a lot of money 
Now, you know, there are plenty of jackasses out there who says, I have an idea for this app, for that app. They never go through with it. Their ideas never come to fruition. Everything I've ever done in my life, I've been successful at. For everything. You know, when I was 16, I started working in a sandwich shop. I became a, a, a team leader at 17. Is that a big achievement? No. Are people at my age who make sandwiches for a living worms? A bit. But you never forget where you come from. And everything I've ever tried, I've been successful at. So, this application from what I do now to my former television advertising agency, which made me a lot of money, I believe is going to do really well. And if I can build it up big enough, I'll sell it instantly. So you wouldn't stay on like Zuckerberg, like, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, who's a hero to a lot of him. Zuckerberg, let me tell you two things about him. One, you know, great idea, Facebook, amazing. Uh, made a lot of money, very financially successful guy. And has more money than I'll probably uh, realistically make. But he's also one of the goofiest, wormiest men on the face of the planet. He was offered millions, hundreds of millions for Facebook. And no, that's not enough. I love my project. I love Facebook so much. I want to run it. Let me float it on the stock market. Let me marry the fucking ugliest woman in the world who looks like a Vietnamese Manny Pacquiao. He's absolutely backwards. Why is he still working? Why is he doing it? He's got billions of dollars. It's not Hollywood. It's significantly cheaper. It's Brasov, Romania. We were here staying at Hotel Belvedere for Andrew had come to get himself a Christmas present. The mysterious, the elusive package. After all, who doesn't deserve a little gift this time of year? It is the season of giving. But first there was breakfast. Strange kind of egg, Frank versus in oil. It's more little sausages and rashes of bacon, muesli, cucumber, olives, omelette, what looked like tuna, just too much cheese, and loads of meat. Not quite full English is it? Not in England. Thankfully so, thankfully so. Um, one thing I was hoping to get your opinion of. Mm. This time of year you see a lot of videos online. People giving to the charity, people giving to homeless people. Sort of one, one, once pranksters are now charitable do-gooders. Where do you stand on that? What wankers you mean? It's not charity, is it? It's charity if you do it purely for the good of someone else. That's the whole point of charity. If you're doing it and filming it and putting yourself online doing it, writing some bullshit like this time of year I just couldn't help myself da, 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 da. and setting up a fucking eight camera tripod system to catch every single second of your charitable deed then it's not charity it's buying Facebook likes that's all it is it's bollocks and they're wankers and who believes it or shares it is a fucking prick anyway who are these pranksters anyway like since when can you go around and like just fuck with people in their everyday life and it's funny when someone comes up to me and like takes my sandwich out of my hand and throws something on me and it's funny like I will literally end your life if you want to fuck with me on that level. Since when is that cool and acceptable just to go through life and your only mission just to be to piss everyone off? Locked up, all of them. Dickheads. And now they're like, oh, like you said, oh, Cherry. Oh, did it this and they've recorded and they've got their fucking radio mic on. Fuck you. It's not Cherry. It's buying Facebook likes. What if I were to tell you I give money to homeless people all the time and I never ever film it? What if I tell you I tip everywhere I go? Every time I see someone who's on the street, I give money. I never ever film it. Because it's bullshit. It's not Cherry, is it? It's not a selfless act. Fuck everyone. We were back in the apartments where existed the super bed, the world's largest bed, and I was soon to be greeted by the lovely Romanian man who um, shared his egg with me. Sebastian. Uh, how are you? Good. The guys are alive. So. Shave my fatchets. Huh? Shave my fatchets. Yeah. That was me saying shave my fatchets, not shave my fat tits. It means how are you in Romanian. He laughed it off because the pronunciation was horrendous.
Let us help you a little bit. Maybe you need your help. First sign of the package. Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I said that. Got it? Bloody hell. Even as a mere observer, I felt the strain of this ridiculous package. Halfway across the world, and it still took four blokes to get it down a couple of stairs. No, I have a best like most of the people want to laugh. occupational hazard to being a G, so sometimes you damage the hand, so keep the pimp hand well protected. Obviously, custom made. Here, take each How the fuck are we getting this upstairs? No, yeah, the <laughs> box got. <laughs> got to take it apart and bring each piece individually. Yeah, a few more. As you can see there, package for Andrew Tate, destination Bucharest, job number 6160801. Apparently he specifically asked for that job number as that's what he does. Mm. <laughs> There was no need to buy them. Now these side panels will come off because the, the nails are on the side. The boys battered the box. They started pulling out plastic wrapped objects, which looked quite heavy. I was still none the wiser as to what the bloody hell was in these plastic bags. Andrew disappeared. Those two things remained. And of course there was this. The largest of the package. Still as mysterious as when he first announced it. Mm. Didn't look like AK-47s though. The newspaper it's wrapped in seems to come from Indonesia. ASEAN Plus. This has been everywhere. Woman in Jakarta. Left Bangkok. Last time I caught up in this yeah, package four months ago, it was in Lucerne, Switzerland. And they're charging me money every day. I don't know how to. Yeah. Switzerland's landlocked. I don't so know how to go is off a boat into Switzerland. Something new? Extra? Yeah, this is extra. Oh, this is the only thing we use water. Off on board. Off on board. I don't know. It's not. To have the water inside here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you be able to turn it on? The first. Like this. Will the water stay together? Yeah, it'll come out there. Will, will you be able to see the pump or the pump be here? No, he didn't know. He's got the pump gate here. Okay, he's got this. Can you access from the bottom? Yeah. 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 These were not the main contents of the package, they were mere extras. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a package which has travelled halfway across the world. It's a <laughs> dirty little thing. Hey, what my machete? I'm the first thing I've ever bought when I moved here. In case of bears or unsavory people, or little tiny cute stray dogs. Yeah, or little tiny cute stray dogs. I'd never do that to a dog. Yeah, dogs are cheap. I like them. Speaking of death, trending, offending the trending, George Michael's died recently. Outbreaks on uh, social media. Has he? Is everyone a George Michael fan now, are they? So what, you fucker? You fucker. Fuck off. Shit. 
So yeah, basically everyone's uh, everyone's been crying out their uh, sympathy for George. It's sort of number one trending. Didn't he take like fuckloads of drugs though all the time? You know, like I don't have that big a beef with George Michael, but like let's take Amy Winehouse for example. Everyone's like, oh, she died. She was a genius. She was a musical genius. She sung about not wanting to go to rehab. Then died of drugs. Then died of a drug overdose. And everyone's like, oh, poor girl. You fucking retard. Like, you should have gone to rehab, bitch. What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm going to take loads of drugs. I'm going to do whatever I want. And I'm, I'm a rebel and I'm a musical genius. If you were such a genius, you'd just fucking put the drugs down. And something is spastic. Now you're dead. If she had gone to... If she had never died and was still alive to this day, she'd be... Fa she'd have faded into obscurity. No one would know who she is. No one listened to her music. Why does this dog want to bite my hand? No sympathy for Winehouse or Michael. Look, Michael took loads of drugs. Okay, I didn't mind Michael as much, but Amy was a complete prick. This dog is getting... Yeah, you know, celebrities die. I, I'm not going to give a fuck about celebrity death until celebrity starts giving a fuck about me. If Michael called me every Sunday and said, How was your week, my man? Do you want some cash? Then I'd care. But in reality, if you were to say, Andrew Tate to Michael George Michael, he'd be like, Who? He doesn't give a fuck. If I died, would he write about it on his Facebook? Well, I no. think if you were to say Andrew Tate to George Michael now, you wouldn't get a reply. Probably not. But yeah. Even in death, most people are afraid to ignore me. I've got machete. What about 2016 overall? I mean, oh, a bunch the of people, year of the, a bunch the of people I don't know, and a bunch of people who don't know me died. Boo hoo! Who's a fuck? You mean like every other year since human history began? People live, people die. Welcome to the real world. This box was alive, came all the way from Thailand, got murked. That's how shit goes. Are actually pretty much the good guys in the world. I think that uh, if we're talking about Russia in general, my scope on the world and my my view on the world is, has been shaped by my father's view. My father was obviously American intelligence, so I guess I should be very very pro West. But when you look at the world for what it actually genuinely is, I believe the Russians have had a pretty hard deal, and I believe that in the West we are sold and we are told that the Russians are always the bad guys. The Russians are doing the bad guy bad thing in Syria. The Russians are doing this bad. The Russians are doing that bad. When in reality, we do the bad things. We funded a whole bunch of groups in Syria, so they fight ISIS. Those groups are fighting ISIS and the legitimate government and fuck knows who else, because we don't know who they're fighting. And Russia's just blowing up anyone who's not the government. I agree with Russia, I think they're doing the right thing. We talk about Russia being aggressive because they annexed Crimea, but if you look at the post-USSR world, who's been aggressive? The USSR had all these countries as buffer states between Russia and the West. They had Hungary, they had Slovakia, they had Belarus, they had Ukraine, they had all these countries as buffer states between the Russia, between, between the USSR and between the West. And now, since the USSR has fallen, all those countries have joined the EU. So who's been aggressive when all the countries that were previously USSR now all join the EU, all join NATO, all put in anti-missile systems along their border, all have tanks along their border. Imagine Russia bought, in, bought Ireland. What would England be saying? You know, we so back our Guinness. Exactly. So who, our Guinness. So who's the aggressive ones? We're the aggressive ones. So we want to take all the buffer states away, put the European Union and NATO, which is an unfightable force. Russia stands at 0% chance in a war against NATO. Literally zero. They don't stand a chance in a war against America alone, let alone NATO. So 0% chance, and you want to bring it right up to the Russian border. We're in Romania right now, and there's a bunch of American soldiers around, and there's a big fucking thing on the news and problems going on because they're building an anti-missile system in Russia, I mean, in here in Romania, on the Russian border. The whole idea of nuclear weapons is that it's a mutual destruction. That's the idea, is that we fire one, you fire one, mutually destroyed, so no one uses nukes. America's putting in anti-missile systems everywhere, so you can't ever nuke the EU. You can't ever nuke America. So that means they have nukes, and, and Russia doesn't. So it takes the balance away again. And that's the whole point of it. So they're, 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 they're just expanding NATO, expanding the EU at a rate now where Turkey can shoot down a Russian fighter jet on its way to Syria. There's a Russian fighter jet on its way to Syria that was in Turkish airspace for less than four seconds, got shot down, killed the jet, killed the pilot. Would Turkey dare do that to Russia if Turkey wasn't a member of NATO? No, they shoot the guy's jet down when it has a three second airspace violation. It wasn't taking the piss. Three seconds. They shoot him out of the sky, kill the guy. Then they call America. Oh, we piss Russia off. If they come get us, can you save us? That's bullshit. Mm. So who's starting the problems? We are. Putin, if you actually listen to him, is one of the smartest, most logical men on the planet. And that's why I'm so happy Trump won, because Trump has enough brain to sit down with Putin man to man and prevent World War III. Clinton and her fucking bullshit was going to literally spark the beginning of a world war with this anti-Russian rhetoric. We've already fucked Russia every way we could. We, wars aren't fought on the battlefield anymore. Wars are fought in completely different ways. Wars are fought electronically, wars are fought economically. And even now, if you look at the news where people are saying that 
the Russians helped Trump win because they hacked the Hillary emails and they made they, they, they leaked all her emails prior to the campaign. They helped Trump win. Well, maybe they did the right thing. Maybe they actually understood that if Trump gets in, there can actually be some genuine cooperation between the West and Russia, as opposed to Clinton, who's a career politician, has been trained to be anti-Russia so, so long that she wants to fuck Russia out of every single business deal, grow the EU, grow NATO, put weapons on their borders, and then think, well, what are they mad for? Russians are the bad guys. You know, we've already devalued the Russian ruble. This is how a war is fought. After MH17, when that plane got shot down over Ukraine, no one still knows who do, does it, did it. We say it's the Russians, people others say it's Ukraine or separatists or whatever. When that got shot down, America makes a phone call to Saudi Arabia and all the other OPEC countries to stop producing oil. No, sorry, it says flood the market with oil. All these oil producing companies flood the market with oil. Because you go to as America says. All your oil barrels flood it, flood it, flood it. The price of oil drops 70% within a week and the Russian ruble's worth half the value. Literally within three days of that happening, the Russian ruble went down half the value. Imagine you have a currency and it's worth half of what it was. So you saved up a million pounds your whole life and now you got 500 grand, bang. That's war. <laughs> That's war already fought. So how are, we, how are Russia the bad guys? We don't even know who shot the plane down. The West are the bad guys. The West are completely the bad guys. Since World War II, America's owned the world. They've done whatever the fuck they wanted. They thought that if they're in control of it, nothing bad will happen. And it's been nothing but complete war, devastation, and destruction. So I genuinely think in most scenarios, Russia are the smart guys. I think Russia's a pretty good country. Good answer. Um, let's go straight to Trump from there. Trump. Trump's the Pe man. People hated the idea of Trump. Yeah, because Trump was demonized as the worst thing to ever happen to politics. Yeah, because these are leftist, these are little leftist, easily offended hippies. Mm -hmm. they, they, don't have, they don't have any concept of the real world. What people don't understand is, people say to me, and, oh, Andrew's violent, Andrew's this, Andrew's that. What I understand about the world that most people don't is that the world requires balance. It's the oldest thing in the world. It's, it's like the Chinese philosophy of yin and yang. You've got the black and the white. You need to have someone who's, you need to have someone who's smart, but you also have to need, you need to have someone who understands violence and understands that violence has an applicable role. Nowadays, leftists want to go through the world and they think violence is wrong. Be, you know, this is wrong, that's wrong. Violence isn't wrong. Violence is subjective. If someone breaks into your house and wants to hurt your family, you're going to get violent. So it depends. Everything has a place on this planet. Leftists don't understand this. So they get so easily offended by someone or, or by something and they think it's 100% bad. Trump's not 100% bad. Trump has a place. There's a place for people like Trump. And I currently genuinely believe his place is at the head of the, at the, head of the United States of America. Who, who was the alternative? Hillary a career politician. Literally, what amazes me most is all these lefts who complain about Trump, they complain about the establishment and they complain about the corporations and then they want to get Hillary in power. Hillary is completely what you dislike. She has pretty much no career her whole life besides being in politics. That's all she's ever done. And she sucked the right dick of bills. So now she gets a chance to be president. How does that work? Trump is the American dream personified. The American dream is you can make your own money. You can get rich. You can be president. That's what he's done. He started with a million, fair enough, but he's become a billionaire. So he ain't stupid. He knows what he's doing. He's become the president of the United States. What's, what's wrong with that? But leftists won't accept it. No, he's wrong. He once said one bad thing about someone once. Mm -hmm. People say bad things about people. Welcome to the real world. If we just drop the bullshit and all stop, stop getting so easily offended by stupid little things and drop the dumb shit and look at the actual reality of the earth, there's not a single person on this planet, including the leftist hippies who hate Trump, who haven't said a bad thing about someone at some point. That's how the world fucking functions. He said some bad things about some people, big whoop. He's gonna be a good, he's gonna be a better president than Hillary ever would have. So get the fuck over it. Trump is a G. And the worst thing about it all, what amazes me most, is that most of the people crying, it's not even gonna affect their lives anyway. Like people are like, oh, Trump's, Trump's going to be the, you smoke weed, you work in an antique shop. What the fuck does it matter if Trump is president or not? Really, Lucy, 21 from Scunthorpe. What the fuck does it matter if Trump's president or Hillary's president or there is no president? You are literally achieving pretty much next to nothing with your life. Next to nothing. You're not in politics. Mm -hmm. You haven't got fucking stocks and shares and companies that matter. Literally, most of the people I saw complaining about Trump on Facebook, either A, didn't really understand politics in the first place, or B, it would not affect them who's president anyway. If you're broke, you're gonna stay broke. If you're rich, you're gonna stay rich. Politics has actually very little effect on someone's life. The only thing politics can do is set a few laws like don't kill. 
don't rob, don't steal. Besides these basic outlines, you've got people like me who are gonna go and become millionaires on their own, and you've got people who just sit around going, I'm not rich because of the conservatives, I'm not rich because of Trump, I'm not rich, and just excuse makers. Just excuse makers, no matter who's in charge, you're still gonna be a shit muncher, so what the fuck do you care for? Of course you hate Trump, you're a hippie, your hair is too long, you ain't got a job, you wanna walk up and down the street saying, down with Trump, like putting someone else in there is gonna change shit. It ain't gonna change your thing, you're still gonna stink, you're still gonna need to shave your armpits, Lucy, fuck you. May I ask you a serious question? Absolutely. Have you ever grabbed someone by the pussy? <laughs> no, but I've been inspired by the President of the United States of America, and if he can do it, anyone can. Having been a- Because if I was a better man, I'd have so social media, I would not know about the ice bucket challenge, I would not know about fucking when I feel afraid. All the dumb shit that pisses me off on a daily basis would not even enter my brain. The ice bucket challenge was one of the most stressful periods of my life where I couldn't scroll up and down Facebook without some fucking attention-seeking dickhead. It started off as Ice Bucket Challenge, and mm. towards the end, people started calling it My Bucket Challenge, because they were too pussy to even put ice in the water. I don't think I didn't notice, motherfuckers, I noticed. It started as Ice Bucket Challenge, few people did it. Then some dickhead skank, Rihanna, or some other hoe, comes along and goes, My Bucket Challenge, with her warm water and her mates. Yay! Doesn't even know what ALS is, doesn't donate a penny to fucking charity, she just wants a few likes on a video and wants to get a fucking her tits out in a wet t-shirt. If you want to be a hoe that bad, inbox me. If you're that desperate to be a hoe, I can get you fucked. Just message me, it's fine. You don't need to be getting water out, make it a mess. It's pointless. It's pointless. Fuck, fuck social media. Next question. My bucket challenge could mean something very different. Listen, my friend, I, there's a whole ton of buckets all over Facebook during that shit. I saw it from my damn self. It was pissing me off. My every single, and even people I had respect for. Even people I thought, nah, my man's a G. Fucking, he'd resist for a few weeks, and he's thinking, man, if I put a video up, I'll definitely get 100 likes with this shit. Oh, yo, bro, yo, ALS, yo, my, I shout out Mike, I shout out James. Like, no one gives a fuck about your stupid friends. No one cares if they're wet or not. No one cares if they live or die. No one cares if they get run over by a truck, let alone fucking get water on their head. No one cares. I, I must be the only person I know who didn't do the ice bucket challenge. Scroll through my shit, Dave. You're not gonna find one. It ain't there. Challenge I'm accepted. Not, I'm not a dickhead. I am not a dickhead. I. Everyone was saying to me, Tate, when you're doing one, I call out Andrew Tate. Oh, now you have to do it. The only thing I have to do is breathe, motherfucker. I ain't gonna do because you told me to. You're not my boss. Who the fuck are you? Do you know how many people I blocked for trying to tag me in that shit? <laughs> Never spoke to him again. Saw me walking down the street. Like, Tate, how you been? I'm like, fuck you. Fuck your mum. Get away from me. Fuck dice bucket challenge. Question from feminist uh, Clara. Coming all the way from Swansea. She says, don't you find- Why is a feminist watching me? Well, she says, she says the following. Don't you find, don't you, she, she's adjusted to me. She said, David, don't you find Andrew despicable with women? See, hey, feminist, why are you watching me? You're, you're, you're trying to offend yourself. It's like, wh why would an antelope go watch a lion eat an antelope and just stand there and just say, that's wrong, shouldn't do that. Like, why? There's nothing good's gonna come of it. The lion, me, isn't gonna give a fuck what you think. So why are you even watching me? A. B. What, what if I said that's despicable? I believe that men and women are made to be together. I believe a woman can fuck who she wants. I believe a man can fuck who she wants. I don't think there's anything wrong with a man fucking as many hot girls as he, as he wants to. If he wants to be married and have one girl, good. If he wants to have 100,000 girls and never be married for the rest of his life, good. If a woman wants to go out there and be a prostitute and make her money and fuck guys and be a stripper, good. If a, guy, if a girl wants to be a virgin and make, meet one guy and marry him, good. I believe everyone should be free to do what they want. So I'm not, I'm not sexist in any regard. I believe I'm a young man and I don't have to get married if I don't want to. And I'm allowed as many girlfriends as I want to have. And they're allowed to do whatever they want to do. They haven't got to be with me. If they want to be with me, it's their decision. So, Clara, get the fuck off my page. Because I know you're only watching it because you want me anyway. Let's cut the bullshit. You've been hanging around too many vegans, too many vegetarians, too many pussy-ass men. That's why you've grown this stupid-ass attitude thinking you're special. Oh, I'm Clara. I'm a feminist. As soon as you say you're a feminist, any man who continues to talk to you is a bitch. If we went on a date and you said I'm a feminist, I would just say, okay, back in a minute. I'd stand up and I'd walk. That'd be the end of our conversation. We'd never talk again. So any man you talk to right now, such a weak version of man, of course you're a feminist. You don't know what a man is. You don't know what a man is, you've never been around a man. You're around little weak versions of men, and that's why you think you know oh, I'm a feminist. Women are just as powerful as male, this bollocks. Listen, come hang with a real G. Come hang with a real man, I will defeminize you. Guaranteed within a week, you'll be like, Ross, take smarter than me, he can definitely whoop my ass. He's got more money in the bank, and he can do a ton of things I cannot do. I take it all back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut my dreadlocks off, I'm gonna start behaving, cooking, cleaning, getting naked when Tate says so. 
Come hang with me, I'll defeminize you. Fuck you, Clara. Next question. Inbox from Clara. She says, I think I'm, I'm thinking about applying. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. Clara, this is, you're very welcome. I'll get you a one-way flight. That's a genuine offer. Filling up the beer. Back tape side. You can tell, can't you? Well, I say just a few beers. Literally all the Heineken's they had in the supermarket. So, lads, lads, lads. My hotel room, I smashed my head twice. Fuck. Cheers. So, what's the plan, Governor? Don't know. A few Heineken's. Mm hmm. Tim, we're going to England tomorrow. I've got to use that laptop, I've got to get flights. No problem. Back to Luton. Uh, yeah. A bit of short vacation, probably somewhere hot. Then back to England for a couple of days, have some business to take care of. I think we'll go with India. India. You've been to India? You want to go? No. Too it's bad. actually one of the places I really don't want to go. Too bad. Have you been to India? No. Do you want to go? Somewhere I do. Take that off the list. Shouldn't I have vaccinations and stuff? If you didn't get them done, it's not my problem. Have you got vaccinations? I'm immune to everything. Nice little smoking area. Yeah. Nasty things happen here, don't they? What do you mean, Romania? Nah, just in smoking areas. You know, this is where you hear the last memories of girls who had their drinks spiked and blokes who have got two bad. No, no girls ever had their drinks spiked. Argument. I'm tired of hearing, I had my drink spiked. That is the biggest crock of shit that every fucking 19 year old says. No one spiked your drink. Okay, first thing, let's look at alcohol tolerances. If you have half a brain, you understand that alcohol tolerances change day by day. Judged on how much food you've eaten that day, how hydrated you are, have you drunk water, how much sleep you've had, your body weight, people's body weights fluctuate. So if I can drink 10 shots of vodka one day, maybe the next day I can only have six or seven. That's how it is. But everyone's spiked drink story is the same, everyone. Well, I went out. No, I went out. I had one drink. No, you didn't. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to yourself. You didn't have one drink. You, you had one drink at home and then one drink in the taxi and then only three drinks in the club and you passed out. How do you know how strong those drinks were? Let me tell you how, let me tell you how drink spiking works. If I'm a guy who wants to spike a drink, my intention is to have sex with you. That's my intention. So what I'll do is maybe at a house party, Maybe, if, or maybe in a house there's only three people or something, I might spike your drink and you'll pass out or something. The, my, the last thing I'm aiming to achieve by spiking your drink is you acting like a drunk fool, hanging around with your stupid friends, throwing up on yourself, taking your shoes off, getting your ugly ass feet out, and wandering to a taxi. That's not the intention of anyone who spiked anyone's drink. And that's how every story ends. Oh, he spiked my drink and I was so fucked. Oh my God, and my friends came in text. I got home and I was so fucked. Why would someone give you that? Well, who's going around going, you know what, I'm going to get a girl on a spike her drink and make her drunk. Now, everyone's trying to get drunk anyway. But it doesn't even make sense. You didn't have your drink spike. You drank too much because you're an irresponsible dickhead and you want to blame someone else for it. You're irresponsible. You're fucking stupid. You don't even know what you're drinking half the time. You're downing pints at random and you're surprised you got fucking drunk. Fucking, how can you be surprised? You're thick as fuck. No one spiked your drink for a second. Don't pretend they did. That's the biggest crock of shit. If I had a girlfriend and, 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 and we'd been together, let's say six months, and she's a nice, lovely girl, and then one day I get a phone call or she comes home or whatever, she's covered in sick, her friend's like, oh, she's too drunk, da, da, da. And she looks like shit, and she wakes up next day and goes, someone spiked my drink. Do you know what I'd say? You're dumped. Because you're obviously irresponsible and can't control yourself. See ya, bitch. No, but it wasn't my fault. I only had one drink. Da, da, da. Don't chat shit to me. Don't chat shit to yourself. You made it back here in one piece. Unless you've been, have you been, has someone come inside you? No, check, no. Okay, so no one spiked your fucking drink. You're fine. You drank too much and you're annoying. Get out. Bollocks. No one spikes anyone's drinks. I'm tired of fucking girls. Oh, someone spiked my drink. And it's fucking because they're stupid and drunk out of their fucking minds. No one spikes anyone's drinks. That's not a real thing. It's bullshit. Drink up, man. <laughs> Start doing this hateful tape thing with my man Dave. That's All my hate mail has been about women or my attitude towards women in general. And it's quite it's been quite an interesting thing really for me to experience because see people seem to be genuinely offended the society the way you're supposed to, as most people do, you're gonna end up believing a bunch of things and saying a bunch of things that 
you emotionally believe are wrong, you don't even know why. You don't know why it offends you if I have two girlfriends or two wives or three girlfriends or three wives. You don't know why that offends you, but you know that it does. Like if a man wants to have sex with a man, it doesn't offend you, that's fine. But if a man wants to have sex with two women, that's crazy. That's crazy, that's wrong. And that's because you've been socially conditioned. Because you have to understand that the society we live in has been built very specifically to make people think a very specific way. And that thinking, the, the greatest thing that they've achieved with this societal pressure is that thinking isn't necessarily the evolutionary thinking of man. At this point. They've changed our attitudes in a lot of ways. Homosexuality was punishable by death for a long time. Now it's celebrated. President Obama, Obama, the president, the most powerful man in the world, is telling Ellen to how brave she is, what amazing things she's done, all because she licked a bit of pussy. But I don't think it's worth celebrating. I mean, you're gay, cool. You're not gay, cool. So to me, it's the same. So I'm the least homophobic person on earth, but people, talk, people are celebrating, like, she's so brave that a, that fucked up dude who, from the Kardashians, who decided to become a woman, I don't care what you say. If you make it to the age of 60 and you're a man and you get all the way to 60 years old and then you decide you're a chick, there's something, there's a screw loose. Don't give a fuck what you say. So that mental dude decides to become a chick and everyone talks about how brave he is. He's so brave, inspirational. They're not talking about the soldiers who are out there getting shot at to, to defend a country. They're not talking about the scientists. They're scientists curing cancer right now. You don't know their name. I don't know their name. Because they ain't celebrated. But we're celebrating a dude who puts a wig on. Dave, I'll pay for you just give me 10 minutes. Okie all expenses. What's the plan then? I guess flying in tomorrow, I'll drive around Bucharest tonight. Bucharest by night. Mm -hmm. I'll show you the site. Nice. Put that camera on my face. View of the palace. The parliament building. The problem with communism. Everybody's equal. Builds himself a rocket proof palace. Not just a rocket proof palace, he wasn't satisfied. One of the largest buildings in the world to live in. Who is this? Nikolai Ceausescu, the communist dictator of Romania. He dragged him out into the streets and shot him in 1989. Any reason? Yeah, there were some protesters in a city called Timisoara, and he was, uh, they were protesting against the presidency, with the president, against his leadership, and he ordered the army to fire on them. Killed some women and children, people went nuts. Tried to give a speech to calm everyone down in Bucharest, but news had already reached the city. So they basically swarmed him like something out of a zombie apocalypse, and he escaped via helicopter from the roof of this palace we're about to go to. He was in a... Uh, flown to a place called Snagov, then he got in his helicopter when people knew he was there started flying but the military changed sides and the military turned against him and ordered him to land his helicopter. They snagged him. Yeah, they snagged him from snag off to was it Targoviste I think where he landed. One hour show trial shot him and his wife in the garden of some court building. Blimey. Indeed. It's the largest building right now. The Palace of Nikolai Ceausescu or as they call it today the Parliament Palace built by a communist dictator, but that is now where the parliament of Romania sit. Repurpose it. He would be turning turning in the grave, wouldn't he? Oh, absolutely. Parliament. <laughs> God. The people making decisions. <laughs> it wasn't all bad. No? What, what, what bad. good did he do? Just, just let's build a defence campaign for Ceausescu, anything? Many good things. If you lived in Bucharest at the time and you weren't an exceptional individual. Here's the thing about communism. If you are exceptionally smart or exceptionally brilliant, it sucks for you because you're never gonna get further than anyone else. But if you are a normal citizen of Book Arrest and you liked Ceausescu, if you didn't, you could disappear in the night. If you liked him, you know, everyone had a place to live, everyone had a job, everyone had food. Not that awful. Get a few inches closer. Dark of the motorways, back street alleys, sonar. It's actually radar because it's using light, sonar uses sound, Dave. Obviously. Yeah, you're on the right path here. Indeed, yeah, yeah. Says, says the local. <laughs> says the local, yeah. I do live in this city, Dave. 
completely forgotten. I do live here. Yeah. Nothing quite gives you a sense of direction like a couple of days in the uh, over New Year's Eve period, though. Like getting drunk. Yeah. I can imagine. Getting, uh, getting some ladies. Singular. Okay. Ladies singular. How do you know? What's the best thing about this car? The best thing about this car is the driver. <laughs> if you weren't driving it, what would the be best the best feature? How comfortable it is. Agreed. It's one of the most comfortable vehicles I've ever owned. More comfortable than a Range Rover, which I've had. More comfortable than a big S-Type Jag, which I've had. It's an exceptionally comfortable car. <laughs> and you can do this. That is heating my seat. Yeah, but loads of cars have that. You just haven't been in that many cars, I guess. That's a standard in well, quite a lot of cars today. You can buy a Volkswagen Golf with heated seats. My bicycle doesn't have a heated seat. It does after a few miles. I don't know if that's a fart joke or... <laughs> it's just a sweat joke. Hello. Put my remaining money into the gambling machine, and that's how you make money. Do you have coffee here? No, uh, Before I came here, you have coffee. I like coffee when I lose my money. Let me do this. How much you pumped in that? 3,000? Uh, some, some money. Some money for the gambling. For the bra. Now, let me tell you something about the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh always pays. 4,000 is what I start with. How do I max my bet? Here we go. Now we're gambling. Now we're gambling. Now we're gambling. Now we're gambling. Okay, a little bit. Definitely lost going on. Click after click after click. If Foley. The sad thing is, in his last 15 years, all the work he's done, all the books he's written, everything he's accomplished, and I've read most of his books, a universe in a, in, in a nutshell, a brief history of, a history of time, I mean, who hasn't read that? The, yeah, who the hasn't read that? What kind of idiot would not read the that? The amount of work he's done, Christ. if he could just speak and write like a normal human, what could he have achieved? I mean, he's achieved things beyond human comprehension, almost. He's, mm. he's the most exceptional human on the planet but but what would he what would he drive this uh, a wheelchair <laughs> nowhere near as smart as Stephen Hawking uh -huh. and I use my intelligence to make money and get laid yeah if I could not get laid or make money or move I'd be capable of much more I'm not saying I'd be him but I could figure things out uh -huh. work on problems that maybe haven't been explored in that way where Just are we anyway it. Tristan where are we? Man, a fucking airport in Bucharest. Drinking vodka, beer. Isn't that what we do now, these days, Dave Tate? Even Hawking himself could have worked out how to um, get this plane off the ground as the snow came lashing down as well as the delays. So naturally we turned to bending spoons. Like I am now. To bend it, to really yeah, yeah, I'm trying. Not Yuri Geller, I can't. Uh, fuck Yuri Geller, he's an Israeli cunt. Concentration. This is why Yuri Geller says mind control. It's all about concentration in your mind. Watch. <laughs> is that spoon not bent? Listen up. The spoon was as bent and limber as Louis Spence himself. Confess, admit that I have mind controlling, spoon bending powers. <laughs> I believe you got bending powers. Right. Drink it time. Who's up? Don't be a worm. It's another Peroni before the flight. Uh -huh. Another Peroni? Sensitive stomach. The so. worm cries. But the worm was not the only one crying as a mob, an angry, delayed mob, demanded answers. No one in any country has a fucking brain. Everyone's retarded. Everyone's stupid. The screams of the mob didn't seem to help, and you could barely justify their logic. 
They were using JCBs to remove the snow. JCBs. A good day, is it? No? Quite like snow, actually. Pretty outside. Now you're coming around. That's what I was trying to say to Andrew. Months ago. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Beautiful day. These mobsters were complaining wildly, but I had no sympathy. My heart went out to the man who truly had something to grieve this day. And that was Mr. Andrew Tate, who had had his Aston Martin stolen. His Aston Martin, which he quite likes. I'm happy now, see? People say money doesn't buy happiness. Look how happy I am. Just been down to get himself a nice cup of... Nothing, don't worry. All right, cancel this card. Just, yeah, 20 pounds. I don't give a fuck. Cancel the card, okay? Uh, yes, send me a new card. Cancel this one. Send me a new one immediately. Why are you canceling the card? And his Aston was stolen, apparently. With his briefcase and all of our cards and money inside of it. Wow. So my, my brother's car was stolen in London. Fun. But he's got it back. Hmm? He's got it back. He's got his car back, but they fucked up the computer system. It turns out that Met told, said that these people are Ocean's Eleven style people who steal supercars. What they did was when he locked his car outside the casino, they hijacked the signal from the key to the car via some weird computer thing, used the computer to open the car and start the engine somehow. And But the whole computer system is fucked up. And who's driving it directly to Aston now. They have the car, but these people are nowhere to be seen. And Andrew's passport, bank cards, oh, all gone. everything is all gone, gone by like a legit group of G's. And we have like, you know how much money we have on those cards. Yeah, I mean, I brag about so my you need to, too. you need to cancel that now? There's no way I can. I can't call the UK from this phone until I go to a shop and buy some credit. I cannot call the UK. I don't. I still don't understand the thinking behind something stealing an Aston Martin, but they obviously are sick they, operation. They've, st they've stolen all the cards and details of a man who owns an Aston Martin. That's valuable. Passport. Oh, Jesus. He ain't getting that back. There's no track record. Uh, they found the car. And it was where was it? Just dumped it. He had 3% battery. He had very limited time. His order was cancel all the cards. I've cancelled all the ones I can cancel from here already. Proactively. I've moved all those euros that you saw in my euros account over to an account that these people cannot access. I've left 71 euro in there. Just to say, because, you know, they might use it. They might, we'll see. They might buy some. Who knows? Are they dumb? We'll, we'll see. But, Oh well. What's the time, Tristan? Just to recap for the view. Time is half past twelve. On and Friday. what time did we arrive? Oh, it's Friday today. Friday today, Dave. Which means what? I'll get paid. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay you. I've got, well, actually, honestly, I've just cancelled all the cards I'd have to pay you from, so you're gonna have to wait a couple of days. <laughs> My opinion of snow had very much changed. Whatever that charger thing is. That's not mine. When he was telling me they use computers to plug into the ECN, that, that's definitely not mine. Oh, really. Anything that you say is not yours, protect you at home. The Aston Martin guy just told me if I had any information about exposure. Is that a jammer? Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's the jammer or something. Probably, yeah. That's the jammer. Yeah, that's, yeah, that is the that's jammer. That's the jammer. Do you need more bags? I'll see. Oh, fuck. Question I put to Andrew a while ago. A question ago. in here from Alex the Basher Brooks. Mm. Weird name. Um, what do you really think of Dave? He looks like a fun guy. Dave and I are from completely different realms. Dave is a creative. He likes to create things. I like to destroy things. We're, we're, we're yin and yang. For all my talk of balance and how important it was, here it is. Cheers. So, yeah, cheers. I'm glad you said creative and not spiritual. Because a lot of people go, oh, Dave, you're such a spiritual, you're such a spiritual nice guy. What, uh, what, what does spiritual mean? I'm not sure. Spirituality is basically just, I'm religious, but I'm too big a pussy to do what the book says. That's what, that's yeah. what it means. Because <laughs> Still religion, half off. Yeah, exactly. Because we all know religion's bullshit. Like, it, I know it's easier to believe in religion. Life is easier if you believe in religion. Life is easier if you think, 
God's looking out for me. God has a plan for me. No, God, there's no plan for you to work in Sainsbury's your whole life. You're just a shit manager. But people don't want to accept that. So they want to be like, God's looking at, God's got this plan. And, da, da, and, and especially if someone dies, everyone becomes religious when mm. someone dies. Oh, they're my angel in the sky. Look, my dad died a year and a half ago. Worst thing that ever happened to me. Not for half a second that I believe he was an angel. Hasn't anymore. converted him. Haven't converted me because I'm realistic. Mm. So people go, well, when it happens to you, did it? No, I've lost people too. He's dead. He ain't watching me now. He ain't listening to me now. Doesn't matter. He's gone. That's yeah. how That's how I believe. Because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a very realistic person. But most people, they need to believe in this dumb shit because they cannot function in the reality. Most mm. people's lives are so shit. They cannot understand that Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. It's luck. And there's just luck how you get through this earth and then you die. And people sit there and go, oh, yeah, well, I'm unhappy. Da, da, da. But you don't realize if you're born in a Western country, you're already lucky. Because you're born in fucking Timbuktu, you're fucked. So you're born in a Western, Western country, at least you get to eat every day. If you get to eat every day, you're the top 10% richest people on earth. So you're already one. So, but, they, but they still believe they need this. Why are the poorest countries the most religious? Because without it, they'd kill themselves. But even in the West, yeah. people are religious. Da, da. But then they read these books and they, they realize there's rules. They go, oh, I get to live with it forever. And the people I love never really die, but I have to go to church on a Sunday. That's long. That's bullshit. Oh, I'm not, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. So that's, that's what they do. They instantly cop out. They go, well, I have to do a couple things. Fuck this. So they go, no, I don't believe in religion. Religion's wrong. I believe in something. I'm spiritual. So basically, <laughs> they just invent bullshit as they go so when, based on zero evidence. So when someone says to me, you look like a spiritual kind of guy, it's what they're insult. really saying is you look like you, sh you look like you could be a Muslim, but you don't have anywhere near enough effort to follow through with it. Correct. Fuck you. Like you. <laughs> that's exactly what they mean. You could be a Muslim, but you like beer too much. Yeah. That's, all, that's all they're saying to you. So fuck, spiritual is the biggest crock of shit that's ever existed. I make up rules as I go. I don't break any of the rules because I make them up. I'm still a good person deep inside and there's a plan for me somehow and everyone I love never, never really dies and I have zero evidence for any of this and I'm spiritual. No, you're a moron. Simply a moron. People don't want to accept the cold, hard reality of this world. The cold, hard reality of this world is that if you're lucky, three to four people care about you. No one else gives a fuck if you live or die. And you might as well make as much money and have as much fun as you can because soon you're going to be dead and no one's going to remember you. In the year 3000, no one's going to be talking about you. Nobody. No one's going to be talking about you the time you stacked that shelf in Tesco and how, how clean and neat you made it. No one's going to give a fuck. No one's going to care if I go out there and bang 10 girls, 100 girls, or one girl, or no girl. You must just do whatever the fuck you want. Do what you want, try not to get arrested, make some cash and spend it, because soon you're gonna be dead. But people don't wanna accept that because their lives are too shit. Because mm. they're sitting there with fuck all going on. And they're like, oh, God has a plan. He doesn't, Sally. There's no plan. You're just fat. There's no plan. Go on a diet. Till next time, be in good spirits. What do you consider the free most. It's already gate 13, yeah? Gate 13, indeed. And what is the, uh, where is gate 13? Upstairs. Here we are again. Yep, back at the airport. A week later, <laughs> finally flying back to England. For Any thoughts on it? I'm going to England for one business meeting. I have to meet one guy for one hour. Then I'm leaving. Fuck it. English people, you think England's great? Fuck you, wrong. I see the family though, isn't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. I can fly my mum anywhere she wants. Anywhere I am, I could fly her there. I don't think it's good even to see her. And you know what you know what I'm pissed off about today? People wrapping their suitcases in plastic. I've seen ten people wrap their suitcases in plastic. My suitcase, the suitcase I lent to you, are Samsonite suitcases. Very expensive, nice suitcases, but the point of having a fucking suitcase is so that it gets scratched up and ruined and protects all of the shit that you have inside of it. Why would you wrap a suitcase in plastic? If you have a suitcase nice like mine, enough to justify trying to protect it, you're gonna walk around like a jackass with a plastic covered suitcase so it looks nice when you're back at your house. It's the greatest fail in logic I've ever seen. I don't understand it. Wrapping your suitcase in plastic. Fucking cunt upstairs, wrapped in plastic. What is wrong with these people? What is who would do that to their suitcase? Not the airport. Here we are again. You think we would have learned from our mistakes? So what are we doing here? Well, we stopped drinking. It's almost midday. Just waiting for our flight. Boozing a little bit. Type of cancer. One survives. So you better bet that 99 people with the same type of cancer die. 
statistical rationalization. Jim. So, we're in a black cab. Aha, uh -huh. business meeting tomorrow, then I'm getting the fuck out of this hellhole. That's England. Bloody good to be back though, isn't it? No. Tropical, mate. No. Seven degrees. Aha. Uh -huh. I hate snow. If there's one thing I hate more than snow, it's England. Don't worry about me. I'm good. Absolutely fine with the the two bags. Don't worry about me. I used to come in here, my friends used to come in here, my sister used to come in here, my sister's boyfriend Marcel used to come in here, my brother used to come. Loads of people were in this house. And one day she said to me, my, you know, your granddad's watch, the time on it changed. The battery's dead, but the time changed. And I said, yeah, someone, ch someone changed his time. She goes, no, 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 no. I believe your granddad did it. Are you listening to this? And I said, no, this is a true story. And I said, well, someone changed the time. Someone moved the watch because that's the only explanation. There's no such thing as ghosts. And mom was like, no, 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 someone definitely changed the time. It was a spirit. And I, I, was, I told her a million times, you're retarded. No one changed the fucking time. You know, someone changed the time of the watch. Granddad didn't do it. Granddad's dead. Ghosts don't change time of watches. That's not how it works. So anyway, cut to two years later. I was staying here. My mother lived here alone at this point. No, no, my mother lived here alone at this point. I was moving house. So I stayed here for two weeks. I, my mom was out one day. I saw granddad's watch. I thought, I know. I'm gonna take them. No, you and, didn't. Yeah, and I changed the time. No, you didn't. And, and then I took a picture of me with the watch like this, like making fun, and I put it back. No. So, no, 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 no. Here's the best bit. Here's the best bit. No. <laughs> About a year after this, I forgot that I did that. That wasn't a year. No, no, no. It was all right. It's nine months, ten months. It was a long time. No, after. I to look at the watch regularly. So anyway, well, no, no, no. You noticed at the time. Oh, my God. No, listen to me. A year after I changed the time, we were, and I was in America at my sister's graduation, and I was telling my whole family, including my dad and my mom, how retarded my mom was for believing that granddad changed the watch. And my sister stops. My sister stops and says, no, I believe mom because she didn't tell you the best bit. I said, the best bit? What best bit? And I had the same phone, luckily, for a few years. She goes, no, no, no. Again, when no one lived in the house, the time changed again. She said this in front of me, my brother, my dad. Every, it couldn't have been more perfect. All of us had not been in the same room for years. And then I loaded up the picture of it, when I it. changed the watch. And she looked so stupid. Can I tell you? All right, go on. When he was well, about seven, I think, some or six or seven, for his birthday, somebody had bought him a gumball machine. Uh huh. So he went outside and decided he was going to charge all the kids a quarter. No, no, no. for one gumball. No, no, you got it wrong. That wasn't the gumball machine took pennies, but I also realised it was badly made. It also took American ten cents piece. Then the kids would come to me and say, "Oh, I've got this much," and it'd be like one dollar sixty in quarters or one in quarters of dimes. And I'd be like, "Oh, I'll give you five gumballs for that," because they didn't know the value of money. I knew the value of money because Are I was you filming him? Yeah. No. It's a reverse angle thing. Oh, okay. Thing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so I, I used to hustle the kids. And, I mean, you used to borrow money from me. I was seven years <laughs> old. I used to lend you money. <laughs> I no, you were And then you had a go-kart we bought for your birthday. She so used to charge him a quarter to go up and down the park. Yeah, park. So, so, yeah. <laughs> this is $47, seven years old, made $47. Shit. <laughs> I don't play. Tristan Tate, businessman since day one. Women. Good to be back in England, isn't it? Fuck England. Looks... I mean, that's a really lovely shirt. Let me see. I still like the jacket, though. Andrew, you should have been wearing that, man. Love the jacket. Oh, another new jacket. Another new jacket. Did you buy any socks, by the way? Is that purple? Or other jeans? purple, yeah. Oh, yeah, what, what is that? I love that. I love that. I love that. Well, gee, what are we doing now? You want some money? God, I love that jacket, man. Give me some money. I need some more clothes. Give me some money. You spend money. Give me some money. This is what I've got left. Mm -hmm. Alright, money. Right, so you're going for a meal, yeah? Thank you. Lively trousers, isn't they? They are lively trousers, yeah. And I got my velvet jacket and my dragon print. Listen, I knew I had to pimp some hoes. So when you got to pimp some hoes, first you got to do is get your pimp outfit going. So I thought, let me go get pimped out so I can pimp some hoes. What else am I going to do in England? England's depressing as fuck. It's so just gamble and pimp. So all there is to do is just have sex and, and gamble money. There's nothing else to do here. Yeah, that's how I've spent my 
got any five years on this earth. Exactly. So that's all I've been doing, having sex ten times a day and Man, losing uh, losing or making X amount of thousand a day and just roll around in my courtesy Aston Martin because my one got nicked in my pimp outfit. So this is a courtesy? It's a courtesy Aston, yeah, my Aston. Uh, it does my, smell very nice, but maybe that's your suede. I'm not yeah, sure. Maybe. My Aston is uh, still being dealt with by the police and Aston Martin and shit, so. So any news on that? Any updates? Not really. One of them things. Oh, for fuck's sake, fuck off. Courses shouldn't be allowed on the road. Look at these old grey haired You know what? In the Aston, what have we been stopped by here? Of course there were two OAPs in it. I have nothing against slow cars. Nothing against slow cars. But what I don't understand is when I overtake a slow car, they all start flashing me and bibbing and getting upset and shit. I have a fast car, you have a slow car, so I overtook you. Why why would that upset you if you had a slow car? If that upsets you, buy a faster car. Like my time is obviously worth more than yours because when I put my time towards work, I can afford 150,000 pound cars. And when you dedicate your time towards work, you end up with a 500 pound car. So my time's worth more than your time. So of course you've got 20 minutes to fuck around, drive. And drive. I ain't got time to do that. I got things to do, I got money to make. If you had important things to do like I did, you'd overtake two. I've got a little bit of editing to do, so I imagine you'll drive me straight back to the Hilton, uh, Hilton uh, suite, are you? No. Because when my car mean? when my car got nicked, they nicked my briefcase which had my wallet in it. And I don't have and all my bank cards are foreign, so I have no bank cards. So I left the casino with about eight grand in my pocket that day. And that was what three days ago. And I and then I just handed Tristan whatever that was. So I've spent pretty much all of it. But I've got the acid in, I've got about half a tank of petrol, and then I've got somewhere to stay tonight. I mean She's fit, she's got her own place, got her own money, she's a G. So I'm staying there, so I really have no idea what you're doing. So you need to fucking you sort yourself the, out. Uh, stay at Hilton. Well, you can stay at Hilton if you're paying for it. Huh? You can stay at Hilton if you're paying for it. I don't have any money to be paying for shit. I don't have any bank cards. I gave Tristan my last money. Uh, the eight grand I had two days ago, I've spent on general being a G, petrol, food, whatever. And suede jackets. A suede jacket, no. and yeah, yeah, pimping. And that's it. So it's your problem. I don't so know where you're going to sleep. So I haven't got anywhere to stay tonight. No, you have absolutely nowhere to stay. No to stay. So you have to sort something out. You have to tell me where you want to go now and I'll take you. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm going to, I don't want to name names, but I will. I'm going to Rachel's and I'm staying there and you're not welcome. So All right. I'll drop you at the train station because I'm a kind man. A very okay. kind man. So train station. Where are you going, Margate? Well, I suppose so. Have fun. How much is the hill per night? That one you were in, about 130, 140. Fuck that. That is, that's, that's impossible. It's worth it to stay in Luton. Luton's great. Wow, it's a lovely place. Well, there's things that need to happen. I've got things I need to do in England. I've got things I need to do in Romania. We've got, supposed to see Tristan's app developers in India. I've got a friend who's been teaching English in China for ages, who finds some time off, and he's gonna do a tour of China for two months. He wants me to go with him. So I'm supposed to go to China. I've got another friend who's commentating in Vegas and wants me to go commentate on him with a kickboxing show in Vegas. So I have to choose between Romania, I have to choose between England or Romania doing things I'm supposed to do. India, kind of doing something I'm supposed to do, but also getting pissed on my face in Mumbai. Or China and Vegas just acting like a fool. This is, the, this is the dilemmas of my life. See, people say, oh, Tate's got it easy. Tate's a millionaire. I don't have it easy. I've got to decide where to go now. When my bank card turns up, I've got to choose where I'm going to go and I have to book a flight. It's terribly difficult. Yeah. It's difficult, do you know what I mean? And like, you know, I've, they've got to put the Aston somewhere because obviously people like to nick them because this is everyone's dream car. But for me, it's just a run around when I'm in the country sometimes. And obviously I've got like these fucking thousand pound Dolce Gabbana jackets and shit like I can't wear these if I go to Vegas it's too hot so I don't know what I'm gonna do with these I'm gonna have to just leave them somewhere find like a safe storage or some shit are we the same size I can, I can take care of the Dolce Gabbana jacket. you can't wear this jacket without a PhD when I went to buy it they said show me your credentials I had to pull out my PhD right then and there I studied long and hard I've got an MA MA I master the arts Fuck the arts. The only art that matters in this world is pimping. And I've got a PhD. Explain PhD briefly, if you, if you don't mind. Eh? A pimping hose degree. A doctorate. I've been to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, and climb my way to the top, and I got my PhD. I can take bitches 
from ghetto streets to hotel suites, from ghetto blocks to buying stocks. I've had a buying Caucasian of the wrong persuasion. I'll tell her if the men think she's handsome, they need to pay her ransom. That's what I do. I make money. I've got a PhD, a pimp and hose degree. I'm a G, I'm, I'm the fucking man. You know, everyone hates me. The more hate I get, the more I realize I'm actually the fucking man. I have the car everyone wants. I have girls everyone wants. I live in places everyone wants. I, I go places everyone wants. I have loads of money. I don't work. Every day I wake up and I just have fun. I do whatever the fuck I want. And everyone's like, oh, Tate's a dickhead. No, you're a dickhead and you wish you were me. That's the reality. If you were me, you would be happy yourself, but you're not. You're a fucking little shit muncher. Fuck you. I'm the man. I'm the fucking man. So, I can't remember what the question was. That that's really the, that's the really answer. Just a basic chit chat. That's it's the answer. The answer is. So I'm not staying at the Hilton. You're not staying I'm, anywhere, Dave. I don't give a fuck about this hard hand shit. I mean, hateful. What's it called? Hateful Tate. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Uh, yeah, I ran away from the. I ran away from Romania from did, from yeah. this shit. You did, yeah. And now I ain't got no bank cards. Okay, I could have taken some of that eight grand, and 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 booked a hotel. If you but in the last two days, listen, I had to feed myself and get petrol for two whole days, man. Of course the money's gone. Yeah. I had to eat three that. meals a day. Yeah. I had to, to drink and get petrol for two days. Yeah. Of course I'm out of, of course the eight grand's gone. How are you feeling after? Well, I'm, I'm nearly at petrol. Uh -huh. But, you know, I'm not hungry, at least. Good, I'm glad. So, of course the money's gone, you know? I don't have access to my millions. When I have access to my millions, it's cool, but the thieves took my bank cards. So, it's one of them things. So I'll get new ones issued from fucking foreign banks. It ain't easy to like get a Russian bank to send a card to England. It is long. Maybe I could go to Moscow and get new cards. See, there's another place on the list I should be going. I need clones. I need one of me in England to finish off dealing with the Aston Martin, putting it away, handling a little bit of business. One in Romania to finish off the dragon, the whole dragon thing. Remember the dragon, the pump and the water and all that shit? Uh, yeah. That's ready, they're waiting for me. Plus my Romanian uh, driver's license was stolen. I had to go to the Romanian office to get a new Romanian driver's license. Just, I need another me to go to Vegas and commentate. Yeah. I need another me to go to China with my boy, take the bullet train around China. Another me to go to India uh, and go so to good. Mumbai yeah. and talk to these guys who are developing the iPhone app. Yeah. And another me to go to Moscow and get new bank cards. I've got shit to do and there's only one me. There's only one Andrew Tate. This is why everyone thinks I've got it easy. I've got it hard. It's hard to be me. Yeah. I've got to do all these things. I've got to service all these women. I've got to go all these places. It ain't easy. Yeah. Luckily, yeah, I'm the most capable mean. man in the world. Luckily, I am a fucking G with a PhD. Yeah. Otherwise, how would, I, how would I even pull this off if I didn't have a PhD? Thankfully, I'm here filming all of you and uh, sort of, you know, capturing your plight. Um, exactly. Your we should start a charity, the Poor Andrew Foundation. Yeah, everyone definitely. can put, everyone can like put a direct debit yeah. directly into my bank, uh -huh. saying, "Sorry, Andrew, we feel sorry for you. You've got it so hard because you're you're not shit muncher and you actually do things and achieve things with your life, and you're busy all the time. So here's five pound of my hard-earned money, and everyone can just give me money and feel sorry for me because I've got it hard. I mean, it's easy. Yeah, you work in Tesco, you go home, you watch TV, you go to sleep. Yeah, of course, you're shit muncher's life, but it's an easy life. You will live a real life like mine. It's not easy. It's not easy." And I've got to gamble all the time. I've got to find time to gamble. Like, no wonder I don't sleep. People say, oh, you don't sleep. Of course I don't sleep. If I sleep, I can't gamble. I need to gamble. How the fuck? What's the point of having money if I'm not going to gamble it and lose it all? What's the point of even making it if I'm not going to spend it all in the casino every day? One can only imagine, aren't you? People have no idea how hard it is to be me. Why is this seat warm? This is heated seating. Heated seated, correct. Heated seating. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can get out of the fucking car, get on the train, fuck off to Margate. I think those seats are quite cold. So you should enjoy your nice long train journey. They're bits of cold, Andrew. They're bits of cold. Have fun. This feels like the end. This is the end. Are we, are we, we are going to resume the series at some point, aren't we? we this is not. When I get new bank cards, I might right. resume this. But you have been quite hard to get hold of like, as, a, as a human being. I've been busy. A I'm a G. I've been busy. I'm an international gangster. I've got right. shit to do. Yeah. I'm moving kilos. So I'm busy. I can't just be on my phone like, oh, hi, Dave. Yeah, hi. It would be nice if you now and then. No, can't do it. Sky. No, can't do it. I'm international we bad say boy. One day? Oh. Listen. Message, I'll message you when I have new bank cards, we'll see what happens. 
I used to play C4 all the time because yeah. that's all I knew. Yeah. And he told me, he looked at my games and he said, you know what, you like to attack, why don't you play E4? And I said, I mean, E4, there's a lot of theory behind E4, man. I, you know, that's, that's rough. Going in there, you got to know a lot of theory. Yeah. And he did the exact same thing. I guess it was his MO. He looked at me. He walked. He was in the hotel. He walked to the other side of the hall and stared at a wall. He's like, what the hell is he doing over there? Then <laughs> right? he turned around, came all the way back. He looked right in my eyes and he said, sometimes you just have to bite the bullet. And that was it. And I don't know, if, was it the walking away and the staring at the wall? Or was it the biting the bullet phrase? As he said, it was just like it opened up like an epiphany. Yeah. Like, you know what? You're right. And I started playing E4, and that took my game to the next level. Stop him. It is stop Really? Wow, this guy is aggressive. <laughs> Ain't nothing going on but the rent. Hip off from Tristan. Andy too. Bet he can't bloody wait to see me. Long time. Here we are again. How you doing? My TV's not working. I'm missing <laughs> homes under the hammer. Oh wait. We're back in the game. Oh, fantastic. We wouldn't want to miss that. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, I've got a car downstairs. It costs 160 quid to get a private car all the way to... Uh, Why didn't yeah. you get the train? Eh? Why didn't you get the train? Urgency, man. Fucking urgency. Since when have you been urgent about anything in this whole project, ever? Oh, I don't know. Well, um, he, he kind of needs, kind of needs paying. It's Tristan downstairs. I'll tell Tristan to pay it. Nice one. Oh, good to be back, let me tell you, honestly. Yeah. Money has been tight. <sighs> anyway, we're going to China, I think. China? China, yeah. I've got things to do in China, so we're really going to China. No India? No India. Things change. This is how my life rolls. Every single day. This is where I have to book flights like an hour before I fly. If I know I have to do something on Friday, I think on Friday I'm going to Cyprus, for example, because that was the plan like literally a couple days ago. Nice. And you think, oh, I'll book a flight. But you can't, because then it comes around to Friday, I've got something else to do. So on my list of 100 things to do, things have moved around, and I think... My next place is China. Fantastic. When we leave, do you have a passport? Absolutely. International man of mystery. Now, don't leave the house without one. Do you have a visa? No. Then you're probably not coming to China. You need to be invited to China. I've got some kickboxing friends there who can invite me. This would be a letter of invitation that I can take to the visa office. If you don't get a letter of invitation, I don't really know how you can get a visa. There might be a way for you to get some kind of tourist visa, but I'm not going to be waiting for you. So. So. Am I not waiting till you sort the visa? I'm not sorting the visa, Dave. Yeah, I don't think you're coming to China. I'm not coming to China. You're not coming to China. But the good news is you get to go to the back to Margate. I'll make sure I update my Facebook with like all the cool shit I do. Like when I get the bullet train around the whole country and I want to go to the Great Wall of China and all the temples and shit. When I'm surrounded by little Chinese girls who like, oh, oh Mr. Big Dick. I'll make sure I get all of it recorded. Mr. Big Dick. Mr. Big Dick, correct. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, if I walk around with, like, a bag of rice, I'm sure they'll all love me. Mm -hmm. You know? I call myself the Noodle Man. Big Noodle Man. They love noodles. Um, this is over? Free ride's over. The Hiltons are over. The room service is over. The 160-pound cars across the country are over. Travel in the world's over. It's all over. It's done. It's finished. You managed to last nearly two months. Congratulations but the free rides come to an end. Yeah, Andrew, I'm sure, we, I'm sure we can sort something out. This doesn't have to be the end. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure this is, this is manageable. We're, we're millionaires, we don't, have to, we don't have to end it like this. I'm a millionaire. Yeah, exactly, there's ways around everything. You're not a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. I'm about to get an Aston. Uh, fuck he has, he's locked the fucking door. That's it, oh shit. Gone.